بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ان ٹو ڈیز سیشن ٹو ایکسیس دا نوٹ بک فار ٹو ڈیز سیشن یو کین ایکسیس دا کورس پیج آن مائی پرسنل ویب سائٹ عارف پار ڈاٹ می دا ادر وے از ٹو ڈاؤن لوڈ آل دا نوٹ بک فائل فرام کورس گیٹ ہب اکاؤنٹ آر ایف پی یو سی آئی ٹی اینڈ آل دا نوٹ بک فائلس فار دس کورس آر ہاؤس ان دس پبلک ڈیٹا سائنس ڈپازٹری well this is the jupyter notebook dashboard running locally on my machine at port double eight double eight and here is the notebook for lecture number 6.29 uh, of the sixth module machine learning for the course titled tools and techniques for data science well the title for today's session uh, is support vector machines uh, well this is the uh, second and uh, the last session on svm and uh, here is the agenda for for today's session uh, well i have divided today's video in two sections in section one we will first have a quick recap of our previous video in which we discussed in detail about uh, uh, about hard margin svm after discussing the limitations of hard margin svm we will move on to soft margin svm and the math involved behind it uh, then to give you the proof of all the discussed concepts uh, we will make our hands dirty to implement soft margin svm using scikit learn library uh, to classify almost uh, linearly almost linearly separable data and to classify non linear data then we will move on to section 2 In section 2 we will see as to how we can transform a non-linear data set from low dimensions to higher dimensions uh, to make it linearly separable. We will also understand the SVM kernel trick which allows us to operate in the original feature space without computing the coordinates of the data in higher dimensional space. Uh, don't worry you will have a very crystal clear understanding of all these concepts. by the end of today's session uh, my dear students although there is a huge list of kernels uh, but we will discuss and understand the math involved behind linear polynomial and radial basis function kernels and then of course for uh, uh, better understanding we will implement these three kernels in scikit learn and at the very end i will give you some tasks to do Well, my dear students, we have a lot to learn today, so let us start playing. And let us start uh, with soft margin SVM. But before that, let me set the stage right by giving you a quick recap of uh, the formulation of hard margin SVM that we discussed in length uh, in our previous session. Well, this uh, scatter chart shows eight two dimensional data points uh, the four uh, green circles belong to positive class having a label of plus 1 and these four uh, blue circles belong to negative class having a label of minus 1 remember in sport vector classifier the negative class is not labeled as 0 rather is labeled as minus 1 and this red line over here is the decision boundary mathematically represented as uh, w transpose x plus b equals 0 uh, in logistic regression uh, which is a probabilistic classifier any data point above this decision boundary is classified as belonging to positive class and any data point below this decision boundary is classified as as uh, belonging to the negative class and this rule is mentioned in this equation over here that is why i had equals plus 1 if wx plus b is greater than or equal to 0 and the predicted y value equals minus 1 if our wx plus b is less than 0 but my dear students svm is a deterministic classifier and is also called the maximum margin classifier as it uh, tries to maximize at uh, the margin that separates the two classes 
and this maximum margin constraint is obtained by having uh, two additional hyperplanes these two lines a positive hyperplane represented by this green dashed line and a negative hyperplane uh, represented by this uh, blue dashed line and both these positive and negative hyperplanes are parallel to this red boundary and is equidistant as well and both these hyperplanes touches the closest point to the decision boundary and these closest points uh, are called the support vectors so this green point is the support vector and over here this green, blue point is the support vector my dear students we need to maximize uh, this margin uh, that is the distance between the positive and the negative hyperplane with two constraints and the first constraint is no training point is below the positive hyperplane and mathematically it holds when this a uh, green condition is true that is wx plus b is greater than or equal to 1 second constraint is no training point is above the negative hyperplane and mathematically it holds when uh, this blue condition is true that is wx plus b is less than minus 1 uh, since in support vector classifier the output label y is either plus 1 or minus 1 therefore uh, these two constraints shown in uh, green and blue color over here can be written as a single constraint shown in magenta color over here and for all uh, positive points this y i will be plus 1 and w x plus b will be greater than equal to 1 therefore the overall result will be greater than equal to 1 similarly uh, for all negative points this a uh, y i will be minus 1 and w x plus b will be less than minus 1 and therefore the overall result will again be greater than equal to 1 i hope this makes sense to you all my dear students in the last session we also have discussed and mathematically derived that the margin or the distance between uh, the positive and the negative hyperplane is equal to 2 divided by the magnitude of W which is the width of uh, this street that we want to maximize and since 2 over here is a constant so we can write it as uh, a 1 over magnitude of W uh, moreover we uh, bring this denominator up to make it a maximization problem So over here this is a maximization problem and over here I have made it a minimization problem. Uh, so the final formulation of hard margin support vector classifier is shown at the bottom which says that we want to find uh, those values for vector W and bias B that minimizes 1 over 2 times care of the magnitude of vector w with the constraint that y i times w dot x plus b is greater than or equal to 1. I hope this makes sense to you all. Well, uh, my dear students, uh, in order to find the minima of a function with constraints, uh, we can use a uh, lang range multipliers which give us a new expression which we can minimize without thinking about the constraints anymore and the expression is shown in green over here here l is the thing that we want to minimize which is equal to one half times uh, the magnitude of w squared minus summation of all the constraints Note that each of the constraints in this uh, square bracket have a multiplier alpha sub i. To find the minima, 
we need to find the derivative with respect to this vector w and b and equate them to 0 and this is shown over here so w is going to be equal to the linear summation of uh, some of uh, uh, these vectors uh, not all because some of the alpha values will be 0 and moreover we get uh, this expression as well that is summation of all the alpha times y will be equal to 0. Now if we uh, just uh, plug in this value of vector w that is w equals summation of alpha i times y i times uh, the vector x in this green expression we come up with this loss function and by doing a bit of algebraic simplification we come up to uh, this green expression at the bottom and from this we can note that the optimization actually depends only on the dot product of uh, x i and x j okay i think enough of recap on uh, hard margin svm uh, let us now move on to uh, the soft margin svm well uh, my dear students uh, this image differentiate between the hard and the soft margin svm if you closely observe the data points in this uh, left scatter chart you can note that the data is perfectly linearly separable and this solid black line this solid black straight line uh, represent the decision boundary and these two dashed lines represent the positive and the negative hyperplanes with the concept of maximum margin uh, having one uh, uh, positive support vector and over here two negative support vectors i hope this is clear also note that there is no data point in uh, this training data set that is misclassified and moreover there is no data point that lies uh, uh, within this margin my dear students in real life applications the data sets normally have uh, some noise as well as outliers due to which hard margin svm will fail to find the support vectors now consider this uh, a right scatter plot with uh, three additional uh, data points that can be noise or maybe outliers uh, this blue circle training data point is above the decision boundary while these two uh, red hollow red plus points are below the decision boundary if there is a single blue point above or below the expected decision boundary then this formulation shown in uh, magenta color over here will not work remember this formulation will work only if your data is uh, perfectly linearly separable as shown uh, in this data set in the left scatter plot so now what to do one option is we change the hyperplane so that we correctly classify all the data points with the cost of smaller margin uh, but due to the uh, layout of uh, uh, this data set in the right scatter plot we cannot go by this option so the second option can be we allow svm to make a certain number of mistakes and keep the margin as wide as possible so that the other points the majority of the points can still be classified correctly so soft margin svm relaxes uh, this constraint by allowing few data points to be uh, to be inside the margin or even on the wrong side of the decision boundary uh, the mathematical formulation of soft margin svm is shown in blue color at the very bottom over here uh, let me explain this to you now note that we have uh, 
added one more term uh, over here and that is c times the sum of uh, uh, a slack variable zeta so this is a greek symbol zeta and we have also modified a bit in the constraint as well so over here we have one minus zeta uh, for all the positive points if you see in the uh, top right uh, um, graph scatter chart over here for all the positive points above the positive hyperplane this zeta value will be zero and for all the negative points below the negative hyperplane the zeta value will be zero because they are very correctly classified for a positive data point below this negative hyperplane the corresponding zeta value will be greater than one while for a positive data point that is on the correct side of the decision boundary but within the margin will have a zeta value between zero and one so this zeta value actually represents the error term similarly for a negative data point above the positive hyperplane the corresponding zeta value will be greater than one while for a negative data point that is on the correct side of the decision boundary that is over here but within the margin will have a zeta value between zero and one so uh, in simple words this zeta value is the distance of a misclassified point from its corresponding positive or negative hyperplane and in this uh, right sketch plot these uh, three lines two red and one blue represent the distances of the three misclassified points so over here in this blue expression at the bottom we are taking the sum of the distances of all the misclassified points from the respective positive or negative hyperplanes minimizing uh, this first term 1 over 2 times square of magnitude of vector w will maximize the margin and minimizing this second term that is c times the sum of zeta values will minimize the error my dear students uh, this c is actually our regularization parameter or hyper parameter whose value uh, we can set while creating the instance of uh, the uh, specific model and this value of c decides the trade off between maximizing the margin or minimizing the error a very small value of c for example 0 0.01 makes the error term this uh, second term very small thus the model will ignore classification errors and will focus on increasing the margin on the contrary a large value of c will make this error term large thus the model will focus on reducing the number of misclassified points rather than focusing on increasing the margin and if you set this c to uh, plus infinity uh, we will get the same result as hard margin svm i uh, don't worry soon i will uh, give the proof of this concept using a sample data set in python okay finally here in uh, green you can see the modified loss function uh, the first one uh, is the loss function for the hard margin svm that we have already discussed above and this uh, uh, second one is the loss function for the soft margin SVM. Note that only the zeta sub i terms have been added over here and over here as well. So we can uh, simply minimize this modified loss function without thinking about the constraints. Uh, please give it a try to find the minimum of this function as we did for hard margin SVM. Uh, well, my dear students, uh, if the concept of soft margin SVM is clear, it's great. Otherwise, please rewind and watch last five minutes video again and I am moving on to its implementation.
Okay, my dear students, uh, let me give you a proof of all the concepts that we have discussed so far. And uh, this code cell uh, is actually uh, over here, it is importing uh, uh, some required libraries. And then you can see a uh, uh, user defined function named plot underscore svc underscore decision underscore function. Uh, so this uh, function is passed uh, the trained instance of uh, scikit-learn's SVC model as its only required argument. Uh, don't worry much uh, about the code of this function. It just plot the decision boundary along with the positive as well as the negative hyperplane uh, of the model that is passed to this function as uh, its uh, only required argument. Let me just execute the code of the cell and move ahead. Okay, uh, let me start by classifying a perfectly linearly separable data set. Let me just execute the code of this cell. Well, if you are following this course, you might have seen video lecture 6.05 where I have discussed that uh, uh, scikit-learn uh, includes various random sample generators that can be used to build artificial data sets of controlled size and complexity. Uh, I think uh, we discussed make underscore regression, make underscore classification, uh, make underscore moons, circles, blobs uh, uh, that are part of the data set module of sklearn. Uh, well just uh, go through the help page of this make underscore blobs method which I have used over here uh, which is used to generate the blobs of points with Gaussian distribution. This n samples uh, is equal to 50. This specifies the number of observations or data points, which I have, I have kept 50 over here. Uh, n underscore features. Uh, this argument specifies the number of input features. For uh, visualization purpose, I have kept it too. Uh, this centers argument specifies the number of centers or clusters to generate. So I have kept it too. You can see over here in the output as well. Uh, well, this cluster underscore std. Uh, specifies the standard deviation of the cluster and finally this uh, random state is for reproducibility. Well, uh, this uh, make blobs method of the datasets module of sklearn library returns uh, a tuple, a two value tuple, uh, a numpy array x of size n samples by n features containing input features and uh, uh, numpy array y of size n samples containing integer labels for uh, a cluster membership of each sample. I hope this method is clear to you all and uh, this has generated a perfectly linearly separable data. So there exists a lot of uh, straight lines that can separate this data. Uh -huh. uh, well I have also used uh, the scatter method of pyplot module of matplotlib to plot this 2D data set. I hope this is clear to you all. Well, uh, over here in this code cell, I have created an instance of uh, uh, scikit-learn support vector classifier. Since the data is linearly separable, therefore I have set the kernel parameter to linear. Uh, more on this uh, kernel thing later. Uh, the value of the regularization parameter, I have set it to 1. Uh, then I am calling the uh, fit method to train the instance of this model. Uh, this line is creating a uh, scatter chart and then I am calling uh, this plot SVC decision function and I have passed this uh, uh, trained model to it. Let me just execute. Great. Uh, you see the two uh, positive support vectors. Uh, these two blue points, they are just touching the positive hyperplane. Uh, similarly, you see uh, two negative support vectors as well and these two green points, they are touching the negative hyperplane represented by these dotted lines and this is the uh, decision boundary. I hope this is making sense. Uh, let me just uh, reduce uh, the value of C to from 1 to let's say 0 0.1 and uh, run this code cell again. And you see it has increased the margin. Do note that there are uh, a few positive data points uh, below this uh, uh, positive hyperplane and few negative points uh, above this negative hyperplane. So this is because we have given priority to the margin and not to the errors. Okay, so 
let me now generate uh, uh, another data set using the the make blobs method the only difference is uh, this uh, uh, standard deviation uh, of the cluster uh, I have increased it from 0 0.6 to 1.2 uh, you see now this data uh, shown over here in the scatter chart is not perfectly linearly separable uh, that is there is no straight line that can uh, perfectly classify the blue and the green dots okay so over here uh, in this code cell I am creating a new SVC model with a very small value of C that is uh, uh, point zero 0.01 let me just execute it you see the model has uh, focused uh, on increasing the margin and has ignored the the classification errors uh, on the same data set let me use a uh, SVC uh, kernel with a C value of say 100 and you see the model has tried to reduce the number of misclassified points now rather than focusing on increasing the margin uh, my dear students please play with different values of this regularization parameter C to have a clear understanding of uh, the soft margin support vector classifier uh, let me just execute this code cell now so uh, this is not linearly separable data uh, there can be no curvy line even which can uh, uh, classify it you have to draw a, a, a circle almost a circle over here if you want to classify these blue points from these red points uh, my dear students you can easily observe that uh, this non-linearly separable data uh, is not because of some noise or outliers rather this data is characteristically non-linearly separable well the most important feature of SVM is that it can work on such kind of data as well uh, using what is known as kernel trick so take a deep breath and let us move on to section 2 of today's session where I will describe this concept in detail well my dear students uh, in this image over here you can see two scatter charts that visually represent two uh, two dimensional data sets the left one is linearly separable that is there exists a straight line that can separate the green and the red data points uh, the right one over here is not linearly separable however if we can somehow uh, draw a circle as decision boundary then that will separate or classify the green and the red data points uh, one approach of handling non-linearly separable data set is to add more features that can result in a linearly separable data set okay let me start with this it is obviously hard to visualize a uh, higher dimensional data so uh, we start with uh, uh, applying some transformations on 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 a one dimensional data set in this image on the left you see a one dimensional data set and to classify the blue uh, happy faces from from the orange sad faces the decision boundary will be a point not a line uh, you can observe that uh, this 1d data is not linearly separable because if we choose a point uh, over here it will misclassify uh, these two blue points and if we choose a point over here somewhere over here then it will misclassify uh, these four blue points so we cannot draw a point anywhere on this line which can correctly classify uh, these uh, uh, these data points and the solution is uh, mapping to a, a higher dimension or transforming this one dimensional data to say two dimensional data and in this image on the right I have applied a mapping function uh, say a uh, fee 
uh, which is applied on each and every uh, value uh, data value uh, on this one dimensional input space and will transform it to a, a two dimensional feature space and you can see the data has become linearly separable and uh, this image show a concrete example of mapping a function of phi of x is equal to x square. The image on the left shows the original one dimensional data points which are of course not linearly separable but after applying the transformation or mapping function phi of x is equal to x square and adding this uh, second dimension to our, uh, uh, our feature space uh, now we have two dimensional data on the horizontal axis we have x1 and on the vertical axis we have uh, x2 which is actually uh, this uh, x square or phi of x uh, uh, the classes have become uh, linearly separable uh, for example uh, this blue point where my mouse is hovering that is minus 4 on the left is represented by by this blue point minus 4 16 on the right uh, and after this transformation is applied on uh, on this entire data set you see uh, the visual representation in this uh, right scatter chart and now we can easily find a decision boundary using support vector classifier by applying the maximum margin criteria and in this uh, right scatter chart this decision boundary is represented by this horizontal red dash line uh, let me give you another example of a one dimensional data set that is not linearly separable as shown uh, in this left scatter chart Uh, moreover, uh, 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 this data set uh, shown in this left sketch chart will not become linearly separable by merely taking the square of the data values as we have, we have done over here. So rather uh, this time the mapping function that will work will be taking the modulus of 2. For example, all the even value data points, for example, uh, this value 10 over here. Uh, has been mapped to uh, a 2D data point uh, uh, 10 0 and similarly all odd value data points for example this uh, 15 uh, orange circle over here on the left is mapped on to 15 1 as shown over here in the right and once uh, every data point is mapped to this higher dimension the data has become linearly separable and we can easily draw a decision boundary uh, using support vector classifier using the maximum margin criteria again good job done well my dear students now let me give you an example of a two dimensional uh, data set that is not linearly separable uh, in the above figure we have uh, red squares that are almost encircled by green uh, circles and there can be no straight line that can separate these two categories of data points and suppose we apply some hypothetical mapping function uh, that is phi of x1 x2 that transform each data point to a, a, a say a three dimensional data as shown in this uh, uh, top right graph and you can note that the new transformed data set in three dimensions is linearly separable now also note that the decision boundary in this case is a uh, is a plane instead instead of a line in the figure below over here i have shown a concrete example once again uh, this left bottom scatter plot shows a two dimensional data set that is naturally not linearly separable and this mapping function that is phi of x1 x2 equals x1 square square root of 2 times x1 x2 and x2 square this function maps this two dimensional data set to a three dimensional data set for example this uh, 2d data point 1 2 will be mapped to 1 comma 2 square root of 2 comma 4 and a 2d data point 3 4 will be transformed to uh, 9 comma 12 co uh, square root of 2 comma 16 I hope this makes sense. Uh, the transformed 3D data set can be uh, visually seen in this uh, right bottom 3D uh, uh, scatter chart 
and you can observe that the data has become linearly separable as now we can use support vector classifier on this uh, 3d data set uh, to get a decision boundary somewhere over here which will of course be a plane well my dear students there are two limitations of using this technique that is uh, mapping uh, a, a low dimensional data set to a higher dimensional data set and then applying the uh, classifier on it and mapping it back to this uh, lower dimensional data set so the two limitations are uh, first is we need to choose what non-linear transformation should be applied to a data set and the second problem is that if we want a sophisticated decision boundary we may need to increase the dimensions of the transformation over here we have moved from 2d to 3d but we may have to move from 2d to uh, 5 or maybe 7 dimensions and this will of course in turn increase the computational requirements especially for very large data sets <coughs> excuse me well support vector machine gives us a solution to this and that is known as kernel trick which allows us to operate on the original feature space without computing the coordinates of the data in the in the higher dimensional space let us now understand the kernel trick in a, in a bit of detail my dear students a kernel function is a mathematical function that takes as input vectors in the original or lower dimensional space and return the dot product of the transformed vectors in the feature or higher dimensional space and scikit-learn uh, SVC class provide linear polynomial RBF and sigmoid kernels and you may come across Laplace RBF hyperbolic tangent this basal function ANOVA RBF and linear spline kernel in literature so today we will talk about the linear polynomial and the uh, uh, RBF kernel so let me start with the most simplest of all that is uh, the linear kernel its formula is equal to the dot product of uh, x1 transpose uh, 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 and x2 where x1 and x2 are the two vectors or two given data points well linear kernel proves to be the best function when there are lots of features and the data is linearly separable uh, and in case of uh, perfectly linearly separable data this is the most preferred uh, option and uh, uh, this is also the most preferred option for text classification as well my dear students polynomial kernel is more generalized representation of the linear kernel and is defined by this formula shown in magenta color at the very top uh, here uh, if the value of d is 1 and this uh, c is 0 then it is the same as linear kernel that is the dot product of x1 transpose x2 this d is actually the degree of the polynomial which is a hyperparameter and we need to specify it manually if the value of this d is 2 then it is called quadratic kernel a higher value of d may lead to overfitting that is classification works perfectly fine on training data but gives bad results on test data this uh, c is a constant if c equals 0 then it is called homogeneous kernel while if c is set to a non-zero value then it is called inhomogeneous kernel well my dear students uh, this mapping function phi of x1 x2 is a polynomial function of degree 2 and it will transform this uh, uh, 2d data set to this uh, 3d data and this has to be done for each and every data point before we take the dot product and over here i have shown the calculations for uh, two data points when we apply this function uh, on this 2d uh, data point say 1 2 it is mapped to a 3d data point that is 1 2 square root of 2 and 4 similarly this data point uh, 3 4 is transformed to 9 12 square root of 2 comma 16 and after transforming we take the dot product of these two transformed points and get a scalar value of 1 to 1 I hope this calculation makes sense to you all 
and here is a simple matrix algebra uh, that proves that given two vectors a and b if you apply the above polynomial mapping function on both vectors and then take their dot product it is simplified and is equivalent to taking the dot product of the two vectors and then taking their their square how this makes sense and over here uh, you see that by using the polynomial uh, kernel of degree 2 we get the same result as 1 to 1 uh, my dear students uh, you have seen uh, how we have achieved the same result uh, that is 1 to 1 by using the kernel trick in this case a polynomial kernel of degree 2 but with far less computation okay uh, please uh, uh, stop the video and try solving this example at your own time for better understanding transform these points for a linear kernel quadratic homogeneous kernel and quadratic inhomogeneous kernel and I am moving ahead to the third type of the kernel <coughs> well my dear students uh, the Gaussian radial uh, basis uh, function is one of the most preferred and used kernel functions in SVM at first glance its formula shown in magenta color at the very top might look Greek to you uh, so let me spend a minute or so to describe it note that instead of x1 and x2 I have taken x and L sub i rather L raised to the power i over here in this kernel function uh, this x uh, is the input vector and this L is the landmark point and I with this L shows that there can be more than one landmark point but right now we will be considering just one uh, on the right side uh, over here we have uh, uh, e raised to the power minus gamma times Euclidean distance between the vector X and the landmark point at some places in literature you might uh, find uh, 1 over 2 sigma square instead of gamma which is a hyperparameter of course now consider these uh, uh, this uh, two dimensional non-linear data set visually represented uh, by this, uh, these uh, uh, green and red points uh, by using the Gaussian RBF kernel we can shift uh, these points from 2D to 3D by shifting all the green points above the red ones like this let me describe this concept by giving you a concrete example uh, suppose this uh, blue circle over here in the center is the landmark point the data points that are close to this circle will have a smaller Euclidean distance and in turn will have a large kernel value the maximum value of RB kernel can be 1 and that occurs when the Euclidean distance is 0 in other words the points are same and this calculation is shown over here in this example 1 you see x1 is 1 2 and the landmark point is also 1 2 and if we calculate we get e raised to power 0 and that is 1.0 uh, similarly the data points that are far from this uh, blue circle that is a landmark point the Euclidean distance uh, will be large and in turn will have a small kernel value and this I have shown in this example too which calculates the, uh, the uh, RBF kernel value between 2 points uh, 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 and this comes out to be 0 0.368 uh, I hope uh, this right graph will now make sense to you uh, this dark uh, blue flat region where my mouse is hovering is the region having an RBF value of almost 0 and these uh, uh, red data points which are far away from the landmark point are actually mapped over here similarly in this right graph these uh, raised points in uh, in red orange green and light blue color are having an RBF value of roughly from uh, uh, 0.2 to 0.8 are these green points which have been raised over here 
uh, my, my dear students now this uh, three dimensional uh, data has become linearly separable as we can find out a plane uh, that can uh, classify uh, these uh, two set of data points well uh, this gamma uh, is actually a hyperparameter whose value we uh, uh, want to tune and this is normally equal to 1 over 2 sigma square if you set a smaller value of this sigma or make this gamma value large it will make this curve extremely peaked and the data points that are very close to this landmark will be considered similar on the contrary if you set a large value of sigma or make this gamma very small it will reduce uh, the peak and this curve uh, it will be uh, a little bit flattened and in this case the data points that are uh, a bit far away from this uh, landmark point will also be considered similar okay i hope uh, that different components of this rbf kernel formula and the mapping of uh, this uh, 2d scatter plot on the left to this uh, uh, 3d mesh grid on the right is uh, making sense to you all uh, so i think we are done with the conceptual understanding of linear polynomial and rbf kernels let's now move on to their implementation for the proof of uh, uh, all these concepts using scikit-learn well uh, in, in this code cell i am importing required libraries and have used the uh, make circles method of the datasets module of sklearn to generate a synthetic dataset having uh, 100 observations uh, having two input features uh, this factor is the scale factor between the inner and the outer circle and this should be in the range of 0 and 1 i have added a bit of noise to make the data a bit tricky and uh, the random state of course is for reproducibility uh, the method will return a 100 by 2 array in this variable x and the 100 output labels in y let me just execute okay great uh, so is here is the uh, data frame and the 2d scatter chart and uh, these are exactly 50 red and 50 blue points uh, and you can note that the uh, red points are encircled inside the blue data points okay so let's move ahead and see uh, how the linear kernel will handle this over here uh, this code cell creates and train an instance of uh, support factor classify with linear kernel then call the predict method uh, then display the accuracy score f1 score the confusion matrix let me just execute and you see uh, the accuracy of this model is uh, uh, 0.58 and f1 scare is, uh, score, score is 0.63 and the confusion matrix tells us that uh, uh, this 28 plus 14 uh, 42 data points are misclassified i do note that my dear friends i have not done any train test split to keep things simple when you are doing things at your own do not forget to do a train test split and that too with cross validation okay so uh, in this code cell over here uh, i'm using the uh, plot underscore decision underscore regions method of the ml extend library to plot the decision boundary uh, we have done this before as well uh, in the logistic regression sessions uh, the three arguments to this method are the uh, input features in x the output label in y and the trained instance of the model that is a support vector classifier let me just execute great uh, my difference since we have used the linear kernel so the model has just drawn a straight line and has completely failed to classify properly uh, you can see uh, uh, there, there there should be 28 blue squares and 14 orange triangles uh, which will be in the wrong region you can uh, you can always count them hmm. okay uh, so let us now use the polynomial kernel with a degree of uh, 2 the code is same as discussed above the only difference is that while creating the instance of support vector classifier i have passed the string poly to the kernel argument and this degree as to let's just execute great 
the accuracy and f1 score of this model are both uh, 0.93 the confusion matrix tells us that uh, 5 plus 2 uh, 7 that is 7 data points are misclassified so results are good let's just uh, uh, visualize execute this code so there are just uh, uh, 1 2 or two positive points that is orange triangles that are misclassified and uh, five negative points uh, one two three four five five negative points that is blue scares that are misclassified uh, please uh, do try to uh, other values of uh, this hyperparameter degree and see its impact on the result since i have not done a train test split so i will not be able to show you its impact on the overfitting and underfitting uh, please do that at your own time okay uh, so finally over here i have used the uh, rbf or radio basis function kernel and i have kept the uh, gamma value as one over here remember for linear and polynomial kernel you don't need this gamma rather you only need the c hyperparameter rest of the code is same let me just execute so we have just four plus three seven misclassified points uh, let me plot this as well good so let's increase the value of gamma uh, from let's say 1 to 50 let me execute this code great uh, the score has gone to uh, 0 0.99 and we have just one data point that is misclassified uh, let me execute this as well for uh, visualization great so we have these two data points that are misclassified no just one so we have an island over here so there is a chance of overfitting in this case well anyway uh, my dear students please do play around with uh, uh, with these uh, hyperparameters and here is the task for you to do uh, well this is the purchase data set i think we have worked on this before as well uh, having three input features and an output label uh, there are 400 observations based on uh, uh, the gender age and estimated salary of a person uh, um, this output column purchase tells us that whether that person will do a purchase or not uh, please perform eda on this data set and then carry out all the necessary pre-processing tasks like uh, maybe encoding of uh, this categorical feature gender uh, carry out the uh, imputation of missing values if any and do the feature scaling as well after that uh, uh, do not forget to perform the train test split uh, with some appropriate cross validation technique and uh, do check out which is the best kernel uh, and uh, do tune the hyperparameters using grid search cv as well uh, my dear students once you are done with all this try creating a pipeline model and see if you can deploy it using either streamlit or flask library I wish you all the best for this task and over here um, we have two more data set uh, we we'll repeat all uh, all this what I have said for the first task on this uh, uh, cancer genes data set as well as on this uh, uh, digit classification data set so that is all for today's session uh, my dear students I hope uh, this was informative for you all if you have liked it please subscribe my youtube channel and share it with your friends I wish you all the best, happy learning and Allah Hafiz.